So here's the solution to the problem where Bob could type 48 words per minute, and you're asked to complete a table of values showing how many words he would type in each time. And what you should have ended up with is if he types for three minutes, he ends up typing 144 words, six minutes, 288 words, nine minutes, 432 words, etc. So these are the values you should have gotten for number of words in your table of values. Then you were asked to graph the information in a chart um, that was in the chart, and on the vertical axis, the dependent variable should be number of words type because the number of words he types depends on the number of minutes he's been typing for. So the dependent variable is number of words, and the independent variable is number of minutes. And so when you graph, uh, put these points on a graph and draw a line, uh, they fall in. Um, it's a linear relationship. And what we're going to do now is take a look at the slope of the line. And we want to know how this relates to the situation. So this, we, if we take the first point, which was uh, and the last point, and use those to calculate our slope, the first point was 3 minutes, 144 words. The last point was 15 minutes and 720 words. And the rise here is 576, and the run is 12. So when we sub this into the formula for rise over run, the rise is 576 over 12, which simplifies to be 48. Now, this means that Bob can type 48 words per minute. And we could have also used our slope formula using these points. And if this is our second coordinate and this is our first, well, then y2 is 720, y1 is 144, x2 is 15, and x1 is 3. So when we sub in there, we end up with the exact same thing, which is 576 over 12. So this is actually a good formula to figure out the rise and the run. Um, it's much easier tr than trying to count up the spaces to figure out what the slope is, or sorry, to figure out what the rise is. And once again, it simplifies to be 48 words per minute. So next, you were asked to, uh, we want to take a look at a couple of points on the table, and we don't even need to graph using, um, use the graph in order to calculate slope anymore. What you can just do is use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 without drawing the triangle. And once again, you end up with 48 words per minute. So there's a number of ways that we could uh, figure out the slope. And what we asked, were asked to find next was to determine the y-intercept. And we're going to do this two ways here. The first way is just to extend the line so that it crosses the y-axis. And when you do this, you find that this, the y-intercept is 0. And so what this means is, and this is how it relates to the situation, before Bob begins typing, he hasn't typed a single word. So just as he's getting ready to start timing, he hasn't typed anything. So another way we could do this exact same question is algebraically. And if sometimes it's difficult to determine the y-intercept exactly, so what we can use is algebra. And we're given an equation y equals mx plus b. And we're also given a point, we're going to take, we can take any point that we figured out before, but we're going to take three minutes and 144 words. So that was the first point we calculated. And for y equals mx plus b, well, our y is 144, our m, or sorry, our x is 3, and our m is 48, because the slope of the line is 48. So we could take any point we want. And remember that um, m is slope, and y and x are variables, and they can be any amount we want. But here, y is number of words typed, and x is number of minutes spent typing, and these can be changed. The, however, the speed he's typing at state remains constant. And if we want to know if b is 0 or not, what we can do is now sub into the equation. So y is 144 from over here, m is 48 and x is 3. And when we simplify, we get 44 equals 100, sorry, 144 equals 144 plus b. And we just rearrange this, so we're moving the right side to the left side, and the left side to the right side, 
and we're going to subtract 144 from both sides, and we find that B equals 0. So once again, the y-intercept is 0. Now suppose you knew the number of minutes Bob typed. Um, write an equation to determine the number of words Bob would type. Use the calculation to show that you know your equation is correct. And this is really important that you understand that sometimes this is asked of you on EQAO and the final exam. So the number of words to um, type depends on the number of minutes he's been typing. So as we said before, the number of words typed is the dependent variable. So for y equals mx plus b, we're going to put in n for time, or for number of words, 48 is our slope, and our y, our, sorry, our dependent variable is time, because remember, number of words typed depend on the time you're typing for. So the independent variable is t. And so this means that the equation, because there was the y-intercept was 0, so we can simplify to be n equals 48t. And if we sub in, just to, now this is where it says use calculation to show you know your equation is correct. We found that there is a point 12 and 576. So if we use that point, we sub in for here, t is 12 because that's 12 minutes. And when we do 48 times 12, we get 576. So that means that if Bob types for 12 minutes, he types 576 words. And that's what we found when we were doing the calculations before and on our graph. So that means that the equation then is n equals 48t. So this is how we show use calculations to show we know our equation is correct. So according to our graph and our calculations, Bob typed 576 words in 12 minutes. So we know our equation, equation must be correct. And how would the table, the graph, and the equation change if Bob typed at a faster rate and if he typed at a slower rate? Well, if we put our graph up, and here's where he's typing 48 words per minute. Well, let's say he was able to type in three minutes 200 words. Then that would be a faster rate. So that would, and then if he was only able to type 100 words in three minutes. So here is where he types in three minutes, 100 words, and where he types in three minutes, 200 words. So here, the faster rate is the steeper graph, and the slower rate is the graph, graph that is less steep. And so the faster rate, for example, here, this is n equals 67t, because if he types uh, 200 words in three minutes, that's about 67 words per minute. So the equation is n equals 67t. So the rate, the slope is greater. So we're going to have a larger number um, than 48 if he's able to type more than 48 words per minute. So here he's got, can type 67 words per minute. If he types at a slower rate, then the coefficient or m is going to be a lower number.